In the previous video, we were making the third step in practicing this piece, adding harmony to timbre and internal singing while playing. And today we're moving to the next step, imagining notes in timbre, harmony, dynamics and voicing with movement. So the task here is playing both hands with correct wrist and elbow movements while imagining every note in timbre, harmony, dynamics, voicing, with movement and glissando in between notes, internally singing, uh, transferring free body energy while playing. Dynamics and voicing are for better control of tone and touch while playing, very soft and very loud, for mastering dynamics and for developing much wider dynamic range of your tone. Uh, and of course, it all affects our internal singing as well, just like a harmony did. So you can watch my playlist titled The Piano World Program to know and study this principle thoroughly. So start with listening uh, again orchestra pieces or whatever timbre you need, soprano voice or cellos, with low volume. <laughs> this is a very actually interesting thing to do because we never done that before, did we? So remember soft and gentle, yet full and deep sound of strings. So what we want with this exercise is to upload to our mind new um, color, new nuance of, of the texture of the sound. You want to remember the sound as soft as possible, still keeping its texture. So the point is, when you actually imagine soft sound, you shouldn't imagine it's like more tight and more tiny. You should imagine the whole picture, the same uh, texture, but it's like on the trans transparency level, <laughs> you would decrease to like 5%. So you see, that would be your pianissimo, let's say. <clears throat> and then if you want to go louder, then you would uh, increase intensity of the picture or they call it uh, enhancement. So the picture will be more, the picture will be brighter. Anyway, so you're going to listen to uh, the orchestra example on the low volume. Then imagine notes in the whole line, uh, let's say, okay, let's say in the left hand, in cellos, harmony, and dynamics with movement. So the task here is to really imagine as soft as possible. So if you try to imagine E, you imagine cellos, harmonies, and let's say very soft. And then you make glissando to the next note. Again, I really assume that you are watching this video and you're following this video after you went through all the previous videos. So for you now, it wouldn't be a problem to combine imagination and internal singing. So again, that's how you do it. You imagine note in cellos, harmony, dynamics, play. While internal singing, you imagine glissando, in cellos, harmony, dynamics to the next note, and you play it. While internal singing, you imagine Grisan in cellos, harmony, dynamics to the next note, you play it with correct wrist and elbow movement. That would be your exercise. And then you do the same with the right hand. Uh, so, the same way you would work with Forte. For example, you need. Um, to play very loud, so what you would want to do is listen to recording on a high volume, with high volume. And remember intense and rich, yet full and deep sound of strings. So just like I said before in the piano, uh, the common mistake when students will start imagining piano more tiny and more sharp, uh, the same mistake with forte when it's reaching its like, high loud uh, high volume in your imagination, uh, 
you might start imagining those uh, harsh. Like, you know, like when you're listening something, you're listening some recording on the high volume with the very bad quality earphones when it kind of hurts your ears. So we don't need this because imagine sound always affect our touch. <laughs> if you imagine sound tiny or harsh, your muscles uh, will feel, will be stiffed and your touch will be um, powerless. So imagining always in a full, rich, deep sound in dynamics. Like I said, just change the transparency level. Piano, 5% transparency. <laughs> Forte, 100%. Plus enhancement, 100%. <laughs> of contrast and all other um, enhancement. So let's just take a look at, uh, at the score. Now, before you start imagining dynamics um, and playing like I just showed you <laughs> very slowly, I suggest you to really analyze it uh, because sometimes composers are not really clear about gradations of dynamics, especially if we talk about crescendo or hairpins. So which hairpins is really crescendo, which hairpins is not? Uh, sometimes hairpins are written for emphasizing some notes, maybe in the phrasing, maybe uh, to show better the harmony of the tone. So usually that's what hairpins are for. But if uh, composer really intended to write the crescendo dynamic, he usually writes it with the words. So for example, on the second, on the second line here, this little hairpin, might just show that you don't need to play this, but this. You see, I didn't really make it louder, although I did that on my recording of this piece. But you can also show that just with your intonation, when you intonate this harmony, this particular harmony here. So that would emphasize it again right away. So you don't have to make literally crescendo here. But on, then on the second bar, you go a little bit louder to this minor and again back to darkness. writes poco poco crescendo, meaning gradually. <laughs> this is also you need to know exactly which beat, which dynamics you have, because well, sometimes you might start crescendo too soon, sometimes too late, and all these little things will affect uh, the whole picture of the music, will affect how you feel in now and what, how you're gonna play afterwards. Basically, I'm just saying everything is connected. So you just don't wanna feel any confusion about anything while playing. So here you will start with C piano, steel piano, then go to the C, the C piano, then C quarter, and then the quarter. And again, after that is not really clear <laughs> how you're gonna make the menu and uh, to piano but it's really up to you usually I make the menu and right here and again I know exactly in which beat I'm using which dynamics where is mezzo forte where is mezzo piano where is piano where is pianissimo if I need that mm. So that would be uh, probably two advices, a couple of advices. So know exactly 
how you increase dynamics or decrease it and be kind of smart about hairpins and crescendo, diminuendo stuff. Okay, so this is how it looks like when I am playing with dynamic. So I'm not making any voicing right now and that will sound just this way. if you can see it from the camera but really in between notes I prepare the sound it's already in my palm a moment before I touch the key that's how I control my touch and now let's talk about the voicing so mm. Uh, this is also another thing about voicing. When uh, apparently you want to voice the melody, don't imagine it simply louder or tiny or sharper. That's not going to work. Because if you imagine the right hand just, let's say, mezzo forte and left hand piano, it changes your intonation because you would sing already Oh, too intense for the beginning yet you would still want to voice it somehow so the master of voicing is to develop ability to imagine some notes more intense still keeping them in the same dynamic nuance so if it's written piano you still imagine this voice piano this voice in soprano, harmony, piano. But now the trick is simply imagine that you are closer, <laughs> you're standing closer, you are located closer to this sound. So the color of piano is still the same in your imagination, but it is more intense and rich. This is how your voice is still piano, but it's more intense. So there is a difference when I play just this. Left hand piano, right hand with support. Now. Now I'm going to play piano, but I'm just very um, delicately going to voice my right hand. this sensation also in your throat because you sing piano you sing very intense but still you voice it okay so um should i think about something else Yeah, basically what you need to do here is try to imagine every note, looking at the score and uh, imagine every note in timbre, harmony, dynamics and voicing. So 
um, I think there's no confusion. You're gonna always try to voice the top note in the melody, if there are some double notes or chords. Left hand, there is nothing to voice, though uh, in the next session I will talk about musical speech and you're gonna use musical speech and when it comes to some certain intervals, those intervals will be highlighted, but it's gonna be natural through intonation, not through imagination much. All right, so that's how you actually control the tone, ability to imagine everything in the timbre, harmony, dynamics and voicing. If you don't do it, then really every touch is just an accident.